Begin self-publishing episode 126, Lesbian Fiction with Harper Bliss and Caroline Monchelet. Interested in self-publishing but don't know where to start? Want to get your book onto Amazon? Want to hold your paperback book in your hands? Learn how on the Begin Self-Publishing podcast with your host, Tim Lewis. I was lucky enough to run into these two lovely ladies at the Alliance of Independent Author Drinks after the London Book Fair. It's a very specialised area, obviously, lesbian fiction, and areas like this are something where self-publishing has really come into its own because there probably aren't that many traditional publishers in the lesbian fiction space, but there are an awful lot of self-publishers. And I think finding a specialised form of fiction to write in is quite a good way to build an audience if you are a self-publisher in the, well, even in non-fiction, but especially in fiction. So I thought it would be interesting to interview Caroline and Harper on the show, both to talk about their own books and also the organisation they're running in terms of building an email list service for people looking to sell lesbian fiction. So now over to the interview. Hello, Harper and Caroline. Welcome to the show. Hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having us. Okay, I'm going to start off with a a definition question. And you're probably going to say this is a stupid question, but what exactly is lesbian fiction? Is it books written by lesbians, books about lesbians, or books for lesbians? Well, I think probably books that have lesbian main characters in them and that are about lesbians. Well, not really books written by lesbians because there are you know, lesbian fiction books that are written by men and straight women, which can apparently sometimes cause some scandal with some very uptight lesbians who don't like their books written by men, but there are such books. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, lesbian fiction, I think, can be defined as books that are about lesbians and have the lesbian main, main the characters. Main characters. Yeah. Where the lesbian is not... Or bisexual the, yeah. women. Whether the, it's not like a side character that gets killed off quite soon or that kind of stuff. It's yeah. the main characters are lesbians. Yes. Okay. So what genres are most popular within lesbian fiction? Is it just romance or are there other genres as well? Well, there are other genres as well, but I think... Like in general, romance is definitely, definitely the most popular because, you know, readers love a good romance, right? I think especially lesbian readers because they've been deprived of lesbian romances for so long. There's been a lack, I think, of representation of positive lesbian characters and themes in popular culture in general, on TV and in movies and in books as well. It used to be that any lesbian character always had a tragic story, ended up in suicide or you know being unhappy, get run over by a truck, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then, uh, and people, you know, everybody craves representation of of themselves in 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 culture. And I think probably a lot of people are already writing stories about themselves, but with um, you know the advent of indie publishing. Um, a lot of people finally had an outlet to, you know, to let their stuff get out into the world. And so it has kind of exploded in the last, I don't know, 10 years, maybe. Or... Yeah. Well, I'm just like, I'm trying to think of like the last time I went into the lesbian fiction chart on, on Amazon, I would say 80% or maybe even 90% would be romance. Yes. I mean, there are, there are some, you know, there's some mystery novels and there's some sci-fi that kind of stuff as well, but uh, yeah, major- the majority is probably romance. Like, I mean, like like in general, publishing, you know, romance is the biggest genre, I think. So uh, I think that's pretty universal. So have there actually been any hits in lesbian fiction that haven't been in romance then in terms of sort of getting into charts or anything like that? I'm not aware of any. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I think that like, the books that do really well, the ones that I can think of, they've always been romance. Well, there are some authors who are, but who are, you know, traditionally published, oh, like yeah. Sarah Waters, for instance. Yes. I mean, she has a lot of lesbian characters, main characters, so it is lesbian fiction, but in, 
it's not necessarily a romance. Yeah, it would never be marketed as as lesbian yeah, that, fiction. You know, that's that's marketed as as literary fiction, and you know, she she's had really well best selling books. But um, I'm just thinking about this movie that we were just talking about, Disobedience by uh, Naomi Alterman. Yes, that's based on a book that yeah. came out a few years ago. That's also mainstream fiction, yeah. but there aren't that many. But breaking out of indie, lesbian publishing is going into the mainstream. I, I have not seen that yet. No, no, I don't think that has really happened yet. Okay, and maybe this is a question more towards Harper, but when did you first realize that you wanted to write specifically lesbian fiction? Um, well, I've been writing it now for about six years. Well, I wanted to write, you know, because so, our story is that we, we moved to Hong Kong for Caroline's job, so I found myself without job. And with a lot of time, I said, I always wanted to write, so what am I going to write? I mean, it was, it was pretty obvious to me that I was going to write about lesbians because, you know, <laughs> there wasn't that, many, that much out there at the time. No, plus, you know, it's, it's what I want to write. I mean, I've, I've made many plans to write, like maybe some crime or something like that, something a bit more mainstream, but I don't know. I can never do it. I always return to the lesbians. So, um, because, you know, I mean, I am a lesbian woman and I just, I want to write about, well, not necessarily what I know because my books are very dramatic, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, th- I think it's important to have, there are so many books without lesbians, you know, I, I think I might as well create a couple with lesbians in them. Yeah, because you get that question from people, you know, why don't you write a, a romance about a straight couple? Yeah, my sister, sister. Asked, asked that question, my sister straight, and she would like to read it. Uh, you know, a straight romance, but you know, you. I, I tell her, go to the store and you will find many. There are thousands of thousands of straight romances, so you can find what you need, but uh, you, I mean, we want to bring out content that, you know, again, that creates more representation and more positive stories and uh, happy endings. Nobody gets killed in my books. No, they don't. If you look on the internet, you'll see that there's this thing that, that kill the gays. It's called where in TV shows or books or movies, the gay characters, male and female, get killed off to advance the plot. And so it's it's a sore point for they're many lesbians. They're just a plot device. They're yes. not a real character. So now there's a lot of people who want to fight against that and have uh, positive stories where the gay characters actually stay alive and have a happy ending. So uh, have you never been tempted to put in random straight characters to kill in your book? <laughs> <laughs> There's an idea. <laughs> so we could, but in romance, we do that. Yeah, we, we prefer to avoid killing people in romance. But actually, you have had one book that, I mean, the character doesn't get killed, but he's dead before the book starts, but he's a big part of the, of well, the plot. Yes, yes, I killed a straight guy. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Victory. The <did> revenge. <laughs> But I didn't do it intentionally, though, I have to say. So I used this dead straight guy as a plot device. Well, as the whole basis for your, for your novel. Yeah. So, yes, actually. That's yeah. good. Yay. <laughs> so you, you fought back. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so in terms of sales, how does lesbian fiction perform compared to, say, other genres? So if you wrote a romance book with lesbian characters, would, uh, is marketing that as a lesbian romance book better than just marketing it as a romance book, for example? Well, I think you can look at it from two sides, right? Because obviously the mainstream romance market is much bigger, but lesbian fiction is quite niche. But it is much easier to market, I think, because, you know, it's very specific. So, I mean, you're going to have not as many sales, for sure. Yeah, I mean, but, commercially, it's never going to make as much money as uh, mainstream romance. But on the other hand, there's you know, main, there's so much mainstream romance. Out yeah, there. it's hard to stand out. Yeah. It's much easier in a smaller market like les- lesbian fiction. And they are the readers are very faithful and very yeah, avid are, and very, very hungry well. for content. And once they like an author, they you know they'll buy everything by that author. And, uh, you know, they read, I mean, I guess that's probably true of a lot of romance readers in general. They're, some of them read a book every day. So yeah. there's always, there are always readers who want to yeah, buy Yeah, but books. also there's like this thing on like the lesbian fiction, Facebook groups and stuff like that. Oh, you can never make a living writing lesbian fiction. But that's just not true. I mean, 
It's maybe a little bit harder, but, you know, we are two people making a living out of writing and publishing lesbian fiction. Yes, and so there are other people who make a living as well. I it's, mean, it's just like any other niche genre, I would say. Yes, you have to, I mean, this is not something, we didn't make a living out of it five years ago. This no, no, is no, no, a, no, no, it takes something time. that happened in the last couple of years, but, you know, it is not impossible work. And, uh, it, but it takes a lot of work and it takes time. Uh, I think maybe in more mainstream genres you can maybe achieve it quicker but uh, yeah but I, I do think that yes all of that is true but being in a niche also has its advantages I would definitely say yes you can really target the, your audience you know yeah except if you want to do Facebook advertising yes that's not easy <laughs> that's not because you can never find a, a, a keyword you know targets that are big enough to create an audience so <laughs> That's uh, that's not it's not that easy to okay, advertise on tradition on that. traditional advertising platforms and stuff. But if you do manage to hook a reader and to get some, you know, uh, to build a, a rapport with a reader, which is what you've been doing. Yeah, and also the lesbian readers. I mean, the readers of lesbian fiction. I mean, they're not all lesbians, obviously. They are very forgiving because I often notice, and I mean, this is very. I find this very frustrating that a lot of lesbian fiction is not, I mean, it could be better quality, yes. like cover-wise and you know, editing, and editing all stuff. of that. But, you know, the reader is forgiving because um, I think maybe, you know, the market is not as mature as other markets because the reader is very emotional. It's They just want these stories and they, they don't care if there are like a hundred typos in a book. It doesn't matter. They just, just want to feel the emotions. They're hungry for the content. and Yeah. Uh, the representation, although it, it is changing a bit, I think people are starting to it's notice. It's changing because slowly. a lot of the authors are taking it more professionally. You know, they they are investing in an editor and investing in a cover, maybe n- not at the level the you know for, of other genres, but it is starting. And, and we often joke about the covers in lesbian fiction. Yes, you, you should take a look at the, at the Amazon it's like, chart. It's like a self-published covers of, of five years ago. Yes. I mean, I think to be fair, I think a lot of the writers probably don't have big budgets to invest in, in that kind of stuff, but, you know, may have, hopefully that will change. But uh, still, it's, you know, you should. You, I, I can recommend taking a look. Well, it will change because in those covers. yeah, I mean, they will sell more books if they have better covers. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. So, how many books have you, as a pair, published between you in the lesbian fiction genre? Mm-hmm. And uh, what's been your most successful book? God, how many books? Well, I think I recently completed my twentieth novel. Oh, okay. So, That's a lot. but I also. Before I wrote novels, I wrote novellas, you know, to yeah. just like get into it a bit more. So we've published quite a few. I think at one point we counted all the titles and we were close to 90 or something. But that, Yeah, but that includes like short, short stories and uh, novellas because we, we, pub, we, you know, we started this little, this little publishing imprint and we did publish some other authors for a little while as well and some anthologies and stuff. But we've kind of stepped away from that now because Harper's Books take way too much time already to market and stuff so we don't have time to devote to other ones but um yeah i think Harper bliss novels there are about 20 or 21 out now yeah and a few more in the pipeline yes so yeah what was my most successful one no strings attached i think the first book in my pink bean series yes so that came out about a year ago two years ago two years years ago. ago yeah that is probably the one that's sold the most copies. Yeah, because it's the first in the series, and every time I put out a new one in the series, the first one sells, it starts selling again. Yes. So that's, that, that's the big advantage of, of having a series, right? Because we just published book eight in that series uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, yes. Yeah. So are they, is that the only series you've done? I mean, have you, do you do just very long series? I mean, eight books is quite a lot for a series. Yeah. But. Uh, this is, uh, I have another series called French Kissing, very <laughs> dramatic, set in Paris. <laughs> so I have four books in that one, but all my other books are uh, standalone. So I've written quite a few standalones, but the past two years I've been focusing mainly on series because, you know, there are advantages to 
the commercially, the they're, they're, they're quite interesting to do, right? Just it's the rising tide of the backlist every time you put yeah. out a new book, right? Yes. So, uh, but you are aiming to end this series at, well, there's yeah. going to be nine books, but there have been many requests from fans to have one book about a specific character, so there might be ten in yeah, the there. Yeah, there'll be ten. No, but, but then, then I'm going to stop. Yeah. Because this is also very particular about lesbian fiction, I find, because in other genres, the, the advice is always, oh, serious, serious, serious. But in lesbian fiction, standalone books, often they do so well. Yes, that's you true. don't need a series to, you know, to, to have a good career in, in lesbian fiction. Yes. But, yeah, you know, I wanted a series. And, um, yeah, I don't regret it. And I will do more series, but I want to do more standalone books again. Yeah. I mean, the only trouble with writing a series is you can feel a bit tied in in terms mm. of your creativity because you're yeah. just writing about the same characters over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But this series that you wrote was a bit, I mean, it wasn't, it always focused on a different character yeah. as the main character. Yeah. And they all, you know, the other ones kind of made an appearance in the background of one book, but then the next book was about another character. So, you know, you did get to yeah. write, no, so most of them could be read as standalones. Yeah, really. I definitely wanted that because the series I wrote before, French Kissing, that was very much like, you know, it was like a TV show, you know, follow up and all these things that happened. You really had to have read the previous books, but my Ping Bing series is very different. It's yeah, as good as standalone, I would say. I mean, you get more out of it if you've read all the books, but you can start at any book. Plus, for me as a writer, it's much more fun because, you know, I don't, I'm not as constrained, as you said. So it's a good um, middle ground. Compromise. A good, good compromise yeah, between yeah, comp- kinds of series, between yeah. series and standalone. Yeah. Okay, so as well as the uh, writing of fiction, you run the My Lesfic book promotion site. How successful is that in terms of letting people promote their lesbian fiction? Well, so we started that about well, almost a year ago. Yeah, it was a year ago. So we've had feedback from the authors who have advertised. So basically, I'll, I'll just say what it is. It's like, like BookBub, but only with lesbian fiction books. Uh, because and the reason why we did this is because BookBub has an LGBT section, but it's LGBT, so it has all sorts of LGBT books in them. And readers of lesbian fiction, they do not read that much gay male fiction. <laughs> a lot of lesbians, they say, oh, God, another cover with a bare-chested man. I don't want this. And so, I think in BookBub, out of, I mean, I think they have an LGBT book six days out of the week, and probably yeah. four of those are gay male gay fiction and two lesbian fiction so we heard from a lot of people so i just unsubscribed from bookbub because you know when there is it's it's so rare that we get a lesbian fiction book and i think many of similar services they either don't even have an lgbt book section or again everything's lumped in together so yeah. we thought well why don't we start a similar service but really targeted at lesbian fiction readers and lesbian fiction books so so we've been doing it for almost a year and our list is growing little by little and we've heard back from authors who've advertised and they've you know all of them have said that it's done quite well for them obviously it doesn't have the same impact as a book bub listing because our list is a tiny tiny fraction of, of theirs but, no, but uh, it's enough to get you in the uh, get your top ten spot in or top twenty depends on the book or and the discount in the lesbian fiction chart. So yes, and they you know they definitely make back the money that they spent on the ad because we're very cheap compared to book oh, so, uh, so yeah, we've, we've had positive feedback, um, so that's good. And a lot of uh, lesbian fiction authors, they don't have the budget to, to go for BookBub or they don't get accepted. Yes. So we are not as uh, selective as BookBub. No, we were, were wel- we welcome most uh, submissions. We did we did reject one. There was a man on the cover. We said, no, we cannot have this. <laughs> Our readers, we will get complaints about this. So sorry. And we we polled the you know the subscribers of the newsletter a while ago as well about you know how they were experiencing it and all the feedback we got was really positive that they uh, they liked the fact that they can get books at a discount because the books have to be discounted or free to be advertised or that they just discover new authors that they've never heard of and you know that gives them new stuff to read so yeah all in all we've had 
Um, well, it's been pretty successful so far. I think. Yeah, it's a win-win. Yes. It's good for us, it's good for readers, it's good for authors. Yes, so we hope to you know, keep growing that over, over the next few months and years. I hope. We'll see. Yeah. All right. You also podcast about lesbian fiction as well. What's the name of the show that you, uh, you podcast yes. under? Uh, it's very originally Harper Bliss and her missus. <laughs> Because Caroline's name is unpronounceable, we can't use it. Yes, so I'm the missus. Try and pronounce. Uh, tell me uh, how to pronounce your surname again, because I'm going to have to pronounce it at the start of the show in the <laughs> in the show notes. So, uh, so you you put on your best French accent and then you say Monchula. Monchula. Okay. Yes, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah quite good. <laughs> Okay, so... This is why I needed to get a pen name, right? Because my name is completely... My real name is completely unpronounceable. <laughs> so, and Harper Bliss sells better if you yeah, like your words. Harper <laughs> Bliss is very memorable. Um, <laughs> so it's a fantastic name to pick. <laughs> so. <laughs> so anyway, how can people find out about Harper Bliss and Carolyn Menchula <laughs> and the things that you do? <laughs> well, <laughs> So we, uh, well, about Harper, you can go to harperbliss.com. For our podcast, it's harperblissandhermisses.com, and you can get all the info there. And then for the MyLesfic, it's mylesfic.com. So quite easy. And the mylesfic.com, that's both if you want, if people want to subscribe to the newsletter to get, you know, the discounted books, it's what, once a week on Friday. We send out a newsletter with usually about between two and four books advertised in them. And then also for authors who would want to advertise or get more info, there's a little tab, authors, at the top that they can click. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where you can find we also it. have our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, because we started uh, doing our podcast in video as well now. So yeah. on the YouTube, it's uh, on, it's on, on the Half of This channel. Yeah. So but it's called Half of This and this is so people can find us yes. there as well. Okay. And uh, how would people get hold of you on social media if you're on social media? Oh, yeah, this is an interesting topic right about now. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I decided to quit all social media except for YouTube. Oh, because, okay. Uh, I just, you know, I, I spent so much time on it. And I mean, I was pretty active because just a couple of months before I set up like a private group for my readers and stuff like that. But um, I just decided to quit like completely cold turkey. And after the first day, I knew I was never going to go back. So uh, I'm currently unreachable on social media. Well, there is still a Harper Bliss author page. And a oh, it still Bliss, exists. But, but yeah, there's not a whole lot of it. I, I'm, tr- I'm trying to, I try to respond to the most urgent comments or questions on there. But uh, I think the plan is that you're going to close your account sooner or later. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we do have a My Lesfic Facebook page for the, the, um, that people you know, can follow stuff on, but uh, the, all the Harper Bliss channels might not exist anymore soon. Yeah, that's true. So best not to look for me on social media. <laughs> Email is probably the best way to get in touch, right? So that's harperbliss at gmail.com. Yeah. yeah. So uh, carry a pigeon or email. That's the you know, ways to... Uh, <laughs> or, or YouTube or comments. Going so, old school again, but I've not regretted it for one minute, so... <laughs> It's so great to be off social media. Yeah, mm. so it's uh, it's great for being social, but it is a time suck. So in some ways, I can see it. Is. Okay, well, thanks very much to both of you for being on the show today. Well, thank you so much for having us. Yes, it's been great. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please stop by iTunes and rate and leave a review. This helps make the show more visible. For free resources, show notes, and other helpful content, join the community at BeginSelfPublishing.com.